In Creole Parametric, you can create a custom parting surface for your mold design. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're continuing on with our design of the mold for the shower head. This is part three in part one. We located our reference model. We also created a workpiece as well as some supplemental geometry that will help with the parting surface. And we finished off video one with creating the automatic mold volume and then doing the reference part cutout. In video number two, we made this plug and the two sliders, in other words, the inserts that take care of undercuts in our model. So again, in this video, we're going to create our parting surface, but first we're going to create our parting line. Let's hop over to the model we were working on. Here I am in the model that we were using previously. I am going to turn on my datum plane visibility. Also, you can see the volumes for the plug and the sliders that we created in the last video. We're not going to need those in this video. So to make things easier to see, I'm going to turn off their display. Let's review a few of the datums that we created in the first video. There is this datum plane called extend, which I referenced a datum plane from the inheritance feature in the reference model. We're going to use that for extending our skirt surface for the parting surface in a given direction normal to this plane here. The other datum plane that we created is a datum plane for the shutoff plane. In other words, when we are extending our different edges, where do we want them to stop? We also have a shutoff curve, which will limit the extent of the skirt surface that is created. That's probably not going to make any sense whatsoever right now. Let's continue on to see how to do this. First, we will create our parting line to make the screen easier to read. I'm going to turn off the plane display. Let's see, let's also hide some of the other things that we don't need right now. Again, make the model as easy to see as possible. I don't need the workpiece. Let's turn off its display as well. Great, let's also go back. I think I've got a curve visible that I do not need to see. There we go, that looks much better. First, we're going to create a parting curve. To create the parting curve or the parting line, I am going to go to the Silhouette Curve icon. I will click on that. And you can see a preview in orange of all the different elements that it is going to use. And it got more than I actually need. For example, we can see that's got some edges for the undercuts, but the undercuts are going to be taken care of by my sliders. It also got some of the edges up at the top, but that area will be taken care of by my plug. To get rid of those extra loops, we can go to the loop selection option in the dashboard. Here we have loop one. That is the main silhouette curve around the body of the part. That's the one that I do want. Let's click the second one. Okay, I can see from highlighting in green, that is the one that is up at the top with the plug. You can click on the drop down list and change it from include to exclude. And you can see now it is previewing in a dashed line to show where it was. Let's take a look at the third one. That looks like it's the slider over on the right. Once again, we will exclude. And for the fourth one, that is the slider on the left. We will exclude once more. That's everything I need. I always like to change the names of my features. Let's call this the parting line. Even though it's actually a curve, not a line. I will hit the check mark. And there you can see the curve in the model tree and it is highlighted in green. Next, we will create our parting surface, which will be a skirt surface. I will need a bunch of other things to be visible. Let's see, I will need my workpiece. I will need that shutoff plane and that shutoff curve, which I called shutoff sketch in the model tree. I will also need my datum planes to be visible. Let me turn those on. 
I actually turn them on when I'm in the middle of the operation, but let me just set up everything that I need to begin with. To create our parting surface, here we have the parting surface command. Be aware there's a drop down where you have some existing surfaces in the model. You could classify them. Let's go to the parting surface command. That will bring up a dashboard with a variety of different options for creating curves. For example, you could create a fill curve, you could extend curves, but we want to create a skirt surface which will give us a number of different options and that command is available from the surfacing overflow menu. I will click on it and this will give us the menu manager. Again, this is an older Creo parametric or actually Pro Engineer interface from the 2001 days and earlier. This is a really complicated command. For that reason, it might not be that popular, which I suspect is why PTC might not have updated it in the past couple decades. But first, let me explain how these model dialog boxes work. Up at the top, you have elements with their status. Some of these are required. Some of these are optional. You can see that the reference model is already defined automatically. The pull direction is defined automatically. Right now it wants to know the boundary reference. Be aware that when you're working in these model dialog boxes, you want to pay a lot of attention to the message area. I'll actually make it a few lines longer. Basically, you are going to do something, take a look at the message area and see what Pro Engineer or actually now Creo Parametric expects you to do or it also tell you if you did something incorrectly. And down at the bottom of the model dialog box, we have some action buttons. Here we have a define button. You can see the references for a particular element up at the top. You could open up an information window and you have OK, cancel and preview. Back in the day in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, you would not get a preview of your features until you hit the preview button as opposed to what started in wildfire 1.0 which was what 2003 or so uh in wildfire 1.0 actually it might have been 2002 you start getting previews automatically generated as you are building features so again this is the outdated interface for the skirt surface feature but there's a lot of functionality there's a lot of power here so it's kind of something you might want to have in your back pocket if you get into any kind of complicated surfacing situation for defining your parting surface. Okay, so the first thing that it wants me to pick is a boundary reference. And as the message area tells me, the boundary reference may be your workpiece, a mold volume, or a mold component. Ah, the workpiece works for me. It is the same size as my mold volume, so that's fine. By selecting that, it automatically advanced to the next required element, which is the curves. And so for the curves, it wants me to select a feature containing curves. You have the ability to change this to a curve chain or selecting curves one by one. But this is why I created the parting line. So I can just pick it right out of the model tree. And after you pick it, you have to click done out of here in order to specify it. Now everything that is required has been defined and there are some optional elements. Let's see what happens if we hit the preview button. I still can't generate it. So we need to add some additional things inside of here. The first thing that we are going to do is specify some extension elements. So if I go to extension here, I can double click on it. And here it says it cannot extend the highlighted segments, move them into the exclude curve pane, or update their extension directions. I'll click the OK button. And so for example, right now it's got these two curves highlighted and it's highlighting, I can tell from over here, highlight in red, might be hard for you to see, that is highlighting the curves up at the front and it cannot extend them. Let's go to the extension directions and now you can see that there are a bunch of points highlighting on the computer screen. It doesn't know how to extend them. So we can create different groups of points and specify their extension direction. Right now there are no point sets. So let's start off by adding a set of points. 
for selecting them, you can actually drag a box to select them. So for example, for these points over on the right hand side, I want to extend them to the right hand side of the model. Let me drag a box to highlight them. And then I can click the OK button. And then done. Now it wants me to select the direction that the points will be extended perpendicular to. You can use a plane, you could change to a curve edge or axis, or you could use a coordinate system. I will just use this plane. And here it shows an arrow and asks me, hey, select the direction for the operation. Yep, that direction is great. Let's click the OK button for those. And then let's add in another set. And I will swipe a box over those points and then click OK and done. And for the direction, let me use this surface and that direction's good. I will click the OK button. You'll notice the ones that are taken care of have changed color from orange to a light blue, or I believe cyan is how you define that. You'll notice that by the legend down here that the ones that are in orange are the default direction. The ones that are in blue are in a user defined direction. Let's add in another set. I'll grab those points at the end. And by the way, for clicking OK and done, you can actually use middle mouse button. OK, we'll close the Get Select menu, and then Middle Mouse button once more. We'll close that other menu manager. Now for the direction, I will tap my right mouse button to get to the back surface, and then pick it with the left mouse button. There it's previewing a direction. I like that direction. I will click the OK button. And so those are three of the sets. The last set, rather than going normal out to this surface, this is why we have the datum plane called extend. Let's click on the add button and then swipe a box just to grab those points up at the front. Once again, I'll middle mouse click to do OK out of the first menu manager and then middle mouse button again to get out of the second menu manager. Now it asks me what plane I want to use. Hey, that's why we've got this datum plane called extend. Here it's pointing in the wrong direction. Let's flip the direction. And now I like the direction that's going. Let's click OK out of there. So now we've got all the different extension directions defined. This is good. Let's click the OK button out of there. Let's see let, any of the other optional elements that I want to do. Here we have loop closure. So loop closure, let's say that we had any open areas in the model that we wanted to fill in. We could do that with loop closure. You can see that we do have an open area over here. But once again, I've got the plug volume to take care of that area in the part. Let's see, then we have the shutoff extension. Well, we can double click on that. And for the shutoff extension, you could specify a distance for it to shut off, or you could define a boundary. Well, that's why we have that curve that we created in the first video that's currently called cutoff sketch. Let's choose the select method rather than sketching a new one. Here's one by one chain. I'm gonna, let's see, what can we do here? Let's do curve chain to select all the curves in the chain. Let me select that and then select all to grab everything in here. It's got a starting point, which I don't think matters. Let's hit the done out of there. And the last thing, a shut off plane to use as well. I'll use this one here and then done return. So we defined a bunch of optional elements. The only one that I didn't find in here is a draft angle to use. Let's do that. We don't want to have a straight vertical surface in the model. So the draft angle, let's do five degrees of draft for any place where basically it's going to extend the curves and then once it hits the boundary, it's going to drop right to the shutoff plane. So everything looks good. Let me turn off my datum plane display for a moment. Let me see if I can hide the work piece. And now we can hit the preview button. And you can see the surface that will be created in here. So again, it took the silhouette curve, it extended in the different specified directions. 
including normal to that extend plane. It hit the shutoff curve boundary and then just dropped and went right to the shutoff plane. And we have five degrees of draft on this surface, which you probably can't tell. But that looks like a good parting surface to me. Let's click the OK button. And one last thing that I'll do for this surface, since it is a surface, you can do other additional operations to it. And while we're still here in the parting surface, we have a round command. I can click on that, select this edge. It's suggesting some value. Let's use a value of 0.25. And that looks good. Let's hit the preview button or actually hit the check mark to complete out of the round feature. And now I have the parting surface that I want to use. Let me hide this other sketch. So this is what we will end up using in order to separate the core from the cavity. And just so you in here, you will notice that the entire undercut is below the parting surface. So for the sliders, I only need to make the sliders intersect the core and not the cavity. Let's see, anything else in here? There's a properties button for the parting surface icon. Here the default name is part surf. I can use whatever name that I want, parting surface, since it will be the only one in this model. Then I can hit the check mark. And that way we have our features for the parting line that was used to generate the skirt surface as well as the round over here. So for this video, I am done. In the next video, we will start splitting stuff out. Let me make my mold volume visible. Ah, let's hide it. It's not see-through. Let me make the workpiece visible. Let's also show our plug volumes and our two sliders. And so in the next video, we will take the automatic volume and then we'll subtract out the, the plug, the two sliders, and then break the core from the cavity. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.